What's going on, everybody? Good morning. Welcome back. How are you guys doing today? Hopefully, you guys are doing good today. Um, yeah, we're back with another Friday Junior live stream. How's it going? As you're coming in, feel free to say hi. Um, I'd like to see who's here. Also, please smash the like button because that does help circulate this. And um, this is good information for people to know out there. So you all can do me that that honor and uh, share this broadcast so that way uh, people can get caught up with what's going on out there. Um, and yeah, you know, YouTube is on the fritz and everything like that. So if you guys would love to uh, do a one-time monetary donation, there it is right there below. It's the link to do that. Or, uh, hey, what's up, baby Yoda? How's it going? Good morning to you. Whoo, man. Got a couple things to talk about today. Today of today of days. Um, yeah, so in a nutshell, we're going to be covering basically some, um, some scripts and coding from Google Photos shows that there's a possible uh, plans for Google Pixel owners. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, Sony is in a class action lawsuit currently right now regarding um, their uh, digital game downloads and how that is, uh, how consumers can get access to it. Um, yeah, so, you know, pretty pretty interesting day. <laughs> pretty interesting day. Um, so I'm just like, yeah. And uh, finally, we got to talk about air tags and something that you know people should know about. But at the same time, too, it's just you know, it's like wow, you know, something something that, that that's that a product that's made to be helpful can be turned into uh, something malicious. Let's just say that. So um, yeah. Anyways, uh, if you guys do want to follow me outside of my social platforms, link into the description. Um, shout out to those people that's like that's following me on Instagram. <laughs> my Instagram is is, is growing, uh, apparently, but it's not based on tech though. So it's just like I, I, I watch you know um, comedy reels and react to them, and, and people like them because the comedy reels that I find are funny, and so they subscribe. <laughs> They follow me on Instagram. So crazy. Currently at 583 uh, followers. Probably going to hit 600 followers by the end of the day. So those on the gram, shout outs to you guys. Thank you guys so much for taking a chance on this guy. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So let's just kind of get into it. Let's talk about it. We'll start off with the smaller story and work our way up to the biggest one. And so we're going to start off with Sony PlayStation. And this morning reading this um, kind of uh, baffled me a little bit. So apparently there's a class action lawsuit against uh, Sony Entertainment regarding a uh, digital download delivery and um what their what their lawsuit is that the premise of the lawsuit is is that um so you can't go to a best buy target or walmart anymore and get these these uh, digital download codes um it has to be purchased through the through the sony uh the sony play the sony store i was gonna say play store but the sony store you have to get a bet you know from there and um you know the idea behind it is is that um, by purchasing it through directly through Sony's uh, online store, um, they say that it is uh, that the pricing is is a lot higher. It's not really competitive. It's uh, you know it'll cost more, and uh, compared to like you know maybe like some sort of deal that Best Buy will have on a game or what Walmart will have on a game. Uh, that that is the I, that that is the focus of the lawsuit itself. So um, Sony basically keeping things under wraps. There's not too much that was um, outlined in the article itself, other than that there's this class action lawsuit going on, and uh, there are people who are jumping on the lawsuit. They're joining in. They obviously, I mean, in in today's era, video games has progressed beyond anything what, what what was ever expected back in the day for a lot of people who are around my age i'm 38 years old so that's tell you something um with video games back in the day a lot of um a lot of the gamers from my era uh they never they never foreshadowed video games to be like this you know so many years from from then you know, video games has become quite literally serious, and 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 I and I see that. I mean, like I, I remember back then we we used to game rage 
if like you know say you're at the arcade you're playing street fighter 2 champion you know champion edition you made it all the way to bison you're you're on your last you know quarter and you're like one sliver coach of defeating bison but then he like does some insanely move like when he grabs and throws you even though you throw a punch and it should have connected his throw overshadows your punch and then you die and you're like you just went through the entire roster of fighters in street fighter and you lost a bison you know like we get game rage like that but today people take it to a whole totally different level <laughs> one of my favorite people to watch on tiktok this dude um pretty much mods and hacks on like call of duty and um and uh fortnite and whatnot and uh yeah people just you hear people's rage from online gaming and everything like that but i mean that's that's the point that i'm making though right is just like today video games has has changed dramatically from the 8-bit 16-bit days to what it is right now not just the graphics and, and and the sound the audio and all those types of things but also you know just like how people interact with the game how they play with the game the attitude that they they portray all those things come into play is a lot different than what it used to be back then so i can i can understand why people have band together to do a class action lawsuit against sony regarding how they're getting their their video games um you know digital download seems to be um the evolutionary state in video games um as opposed to us having like a hard copy like most people that i that i know of i took a poll amongst my community and one of the things that 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 came back that was that was pretty well known is that people will still buy hard copy versions of video games but it's to buy it for like a nostalgic purpose like you know to buy it keep it wrapped in the cellophane never open it put it away and then maybe like 15 20 years from now they can show it off it's unopened and anything like that right most people today will do hold on yeah okay let me finish this buddy you can tell me about it he finished his noodles i made him breakfast he came tell me that he finished his breakfast and that he's gonna watch um he 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 watches these roblox videos on youtube about granny's house or something like that it's super creepy but anyways um yeah so most people would, would, would prefer to get digital uh content uh not content but digital games like downloaded to a hard drive on their on their console uh, because one, you don't have to worry about like disc scratchings or cartridge chipping and breaking, right? It's, it's digital media and, um, you know, so, you, and, and you can't lose the game. Like you don't have to be like, where the hell is this game at? And have to like, you know, rifle through all your crap just to try and find it because it's digitally saved on your console. And of course we have the next evolutionary state in video gaming, which is Google Stadia, uh, cloud gaming, uh, and yeah for those people who are like well apple has apple arcade that, that's completely different <laughs> apple arcade the concept of apple arcade is completely different from google stadia but again it's online and um it's kind of moving towards that route i mean you know uh, sony was one of the first to actually do cloud gaming uh before google stadia ever came out but it just never picked off when sony was doing it and um who knows why maybe maybe marketing wasn't you know wasn't there for them to do it um but yeah it's got to make that clear stadium was not the first one to have the concept of cloud-based gaming uh, sony had that before stadia um but that's the direction that they're going so seeing how people are just like you know what i could have got you know this uh this this code for you know to digital you know to download the digital game to my console i could have got like 15 percent off at target but Sony no longer allows that, you know, is is the reason for this lawsuit. So that's why this lawsuit exists. It's kind of crazy. You guys can read up more about it. Um, and when there's more reported on it in the details, then I'll talk about it in in, in, a, in a future live stream. All right. So kind of switching tracks here. Let's talk about Apple Air Tags. And people kind of like worried that some people are going to be able to stock them with um, with Apple Air Tags. Oh, look at that. My sleep data just came in. So I slept for five hours and 30 minutes, which is 392% above your typical. <laughs> That's got to feel good. Of course, this is the first data that it's collected. So obviously, you know, we'll wait till it gets a load of my sleep patterns. But my deep sleep was actually three hours. So five hours and 30 minutes is the time I slept from the moment I laid down to the moment I woke up. But my actual deep sleep, when, when I was in my REM cycle, that is like three hours. Anyway, so yeah, 
uh, Apple AirTags. If you don't know what this product is, basically it's a really nifty little feature, well, feature plus hardware um, that will allow you to locate and find things, right? So it's like, it's it's basically like, like, like a GPS tag, okay? You can snap this thing onto, you know, your keychain to find your house keys. You can snap it onto your backpack to find your backpack. You can snap it onto your, your, your kid's belt loop on their pants so you know where your kids are like this thing this thing has a wide variety of, of, of multi-purpose um that you can do with it but what a lot of people are afraid of is that people can use air tags to stalk you now i've been watching a little bit of videos from different other youtubers who have uh received the product unboxed it showed people how to set it up and used it and from my understanding uh when you set it up and everything it's pretty much connected to your iCloud accounts now how would one person be able to uh track it is beyond me because like i said like I, I mess around with ios i'm not heavily uh, knowledge based in ios like i am with android um so you know someone could probably elaborate in the comments if you're watching the replay or anyone that comes in live to watch can elaborate on that in the chat but from my understanding it's connected to accounts. So somebody else that has a different iCloud account, to my knowledge, shouldn't have access to being able to track those tags unless you've given them access to do it. Uh, now, of course, there's some probably some scenarios. Maybe boyfriend and girlfriend share the same iCloud account, you know. So um, when they break up, you know, the the boyfriend's still using it, the girlfriend's still using it. But that's where one one of them has to create a whole new iCloud account and completely leave the other one. And change passwords and stuff like that too so the other person can't get into it um you have to think of those things right um the dangers of gps tagging yes uh you, you can't have something good without something bad i firmly believe it, believe in yin yang okay like you know without light darkness cannot exist without light evil cannot exist without good right like because if you don't have an opposition to it how can you claim one to be one thing if you can't even identify it differently from the other one i believe in that and with with technology there's good and there's bad there there always is i've advocated this for so many years talking about social platforms how they are good because you can connect with people you can find longtime friends that may have moved to a different part of the country and you haven't seen each other in so many years but then it's also bad because it does it can take up majority time of your day which is the time that you could have used to be a little bit more productive and uh that's the bad right so with apple air tags yes there's going to be good which is what the intentions of it is for is to track items uh that the tag is is attached to the, the downside to it is is that someone can use it for malicious purposes right like like, you know, if you don't know what, what, what an air tag is, someone can totally fool you and be like, yo, I got you a, I got you a dope Apple logo keychain and snap it onto your key ring. And you're not even knowing it's an air tag and it, 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 it can be tracked. And, you know, um, yeah, some crazy partner could be like, now I got it on your keychain. Now I can track where you go. I can see where you're driving to, you know, that type of stuff. I mean, those things exist. Pe Trust me, people's minds can be a very dark place. They can go in places that you've never imagined that you would ever dwell in and thought. So I'm just saying it could be there. Um, but, uh, you know, for those people that are like absolutely worried about it, like you, you don't have to be like super paranoid and here's the reason why now, i'm seeing people take to social media talking about how dangerous air tags is okay first of all one and this is the biggest advice i'm going to give is that people got to stop worrying about what other people do and got to get it out of their head they cannot control what another person does okay so you may not like apple air tags you may see how fallible it is but it doesn't mean that you have the right to tell other people that you don't even know what they can and cannot buy. If they choose to buy it, that's entirely up to them. And at the end of the day, when you really think back at it, it has no effect on you because you don't even know the person. They don't live with you. They don't interact with you. This is just totally random people. I don't know why people have this sensation to be able to go out there and, sit and, and figure like they can use social media platforms to control other people's lives. But that is beyond me. You cannot, right? The most you can probably do on social media that's even considered socially acceptable is possibly influence people. But even that can be detrimental to someone's life because if you influence them to do something completely bad, they can it can totally turn around and blow up in your face. Um, but 
So that's that's number one. Uh, number two is that you don't have to buy the product. Just because Apple puts out AirTags doesn't mean that even if you're an Apple fanatic, doesn't mean that you have to go out and buy Apple AirTags or you're not Apple-y Apple enough. <laughs> tongue twister there and that's not even a real word <laughs> but you guys get what i'm saying so not everything that apple puts out means that you have to buy it in order for people to recognize you as an apple person right you know i like google pixels i know definitely i didn't have to buy a pixel book i didn't have to buy you know all these different pixels that i have but i chose to do it but i don't have to i could have just had the pixel 5 and if I say that I'm hashtag team pixel, then I'm team pixel. Simple as that. There's, you know, that that's the whole point behind all of it. So, um, yeah. So if, if you feel like that, you know, Apple AirTag serves no purpose in your life and you're more concerned about security issues and things like that, just don't buy the product. Do not buy the product. Simple, one and done. Move on with your life. Do what you do, what you do. do what you do best. Do what you do best after that. Um, to me personally, I think that anyone that's gonna that's gonna be using Apple AirTags, you know, obviously wants to be able to keep track of their things. Maybe they're, you know, they have so much going on in their day, they're a little bit absent-minded, they easily lose their car keys, they easily lose their laptop bag, etc. And so they need these things to quickly, you know, to help them quickly move about their day so they're not losing time trying to search for something. And also, Apple AirTags serves an even better purpose, and that's security. If you have it, say, you know, say you have a backpack that has like your laptop, your tablet, and several other things, right? That you carry with you, we carry with you on a day to day. And maybe where it's not exposed and seen, but maybe somewhere on the backpack that no one would ever think of, you can make a thin slice in the padding and tuck an air tag in there and sew it back up. And the reason why I say that is because with that tag being in there, say you're on the train, you're commuting, you know, home from work, you know, some some low life scum, you know, who just doesn't want to work for a living or make money the right way, decides to rob you. Some people have this notion where they got to fight for what they have. And so they end up um, resisting, struggling, fighting, and ended up getting, you know, seriously hurt or even killed in the process. But with air tags, the thing that I see about it is because of its its uh, its accuracy and location, you can give up the bag. You can give up the bag. And as soon as that person turns to run, borrow somebody's phone, call 911, tell them you were robbed, give the description of the robber, let them know that you have tracking on it. Um, log into an iCloud as soon as possible. Start tracking it help the cops locate the item. I mean, there were a lot of different things like that. Some of them worked. It also depends on law enforcement on how well they're, they're, they understand the technology and, and the way that it can better serve it. I mean, I've I never used anything like, like AirTags before, but I have used a tracking service before. When I got robbed at gunpoint, you know, for the, the, the Boost ZTE Max, which was such a stupid reason for anyone to stick me up for that phone, but hey, whatever. I had um, the Cerberus tracking app, which was actually pretty good because Cerberus was a hell of a lot better than the native um, Find My Phone on Android. But with Cerberus, you had the ability to not only GPS track it to see its location, uh, even when it was connected to Wi-Fi because the, dip, the, the, the dips popped the, the top of the phone open and took my SIM card and threw it out thinking that, you know, when we track, but it connected it to Wi-Fi. Um, and so yeah, you know, it connects to Wi-Fi, and I was able to find out its location. I watched it, and like I didn't just immediately go after it. I waited for like two days to see if the phone stayed at that location, and it stayed at that location for two days. So I called the police because I had already made a report when I got stuck up with a gun for my phone. Um, I went back to the police station that was nearby, contacted them, had a cop show up, told them, "Look, I'm tracking my phone. This is," a, and, and, and like I showed the other phone that I had showed them everything right and what's funny is that Cerberus was so good of a tracking app that it allowed me to record audio without them knowing that the phone was recording audio it allowed me to randomly take selfies so like if they were holding the phone if they were playing around on the phone it would um 
it would snap a photo of them. So I got the photos of of the you know the person using the phone. I got a video of them using the phone. But the police were very slow at things. They were just by the location where the phone was at. Um, they had called, told my brother to tell me to to activate the sound on the phone. And when they had told me to activate the sound on the phone, they technically were still in their vehicles pulling up. They hadn't gotten out and started fanning around that area to listen for it. So when I did that, I guess the person broke the phone or whatever to shut it off because they I disabled them from using the power button. They couldn't turn it off. Um, but anyways, that's what I'm saying. Like, like tracking, you know, stuff like that is good. These air tags serve a purpose in that. In, in that, um, you you know, you may not be able to, to install a tracking service on, you know, like a power bank. But if you put an air tag somewhere in your backpack that's not, you know, not known to be there, you can track it. And yes, air tags require battery replacements, but you know what I mean? You know, w w when you know that that battery is dying, because obviously you're going to get a notification that the battery in that tag is, is low or dying, and you can go and get another battery and swap it and replace it. So, I mean, that's, that's some of the benefits of that. And um, yeah, so with, with technology, I'm just going to say there's good and bad always. Always will be. That's not going to change. All right, so uh, final topic here before we end the show. It's a little short show today. Hopefully you guys are okay with that. And um, I take it out. I put the I put the metal band on my Pebble Time, and I've been using it. It's connected to the iPhone. I'm getting all my notifications, exactly what I need out of it. Don't need a touchscreen watch. However, when I do get a new smartwatch, it is going to be the Pixel Watch. One day, one day, hopefully, hopefully one day. Um, okay, so anyways, let's talk about Google Photos because we are just coming up to that point where Google Photos is about to discontinue free high quality unlimited backups for Android users, for iOS users. Um, so going forward beyond that point, any photo that you back up, whether it's full res photos or high quality photos, it's going to count against cloud storage from Google. So if you are a member of Google One, then this is going to count against whatever allotment of data you have at the backup. Now, there are different platforms you can go to that you can back your photos up. Uh, I believe Amazon Photos has unlimited. I believe uh, there are various different ones you can use, but I think Amazon Photos allows you to back up unlimitedly, if I remember, if I remember correctly, because that was one I think I recommended to people to kind of sign up for to get photo photo backups it was amazon and, and why wouldn't amazon be able to give you unlimited of course the giant company amazon web services you know they they, they have ample space to host people's photos uh, however recently uh with the latest update to google photos apk file it was toured through they were looking through code they, they were looking through script lines and they found one that kind of suggested that it looks like that google is on the premise of starting a pixel plan for Google Photos. And what that means is, is that there's going to be like allotted plans for photo backup, but there's one that's free and it's high quality, high quality photo backup. Now, looking more into detail to that, what they were able to find is that with the free high quality backup that is going to be offered to Google Pixel phones only exclusively, that it looks like that, you know, the photo will be scaled down to 60 megapixels. Um, which a lot are speculating that's a lot lower of a resolution than um, than what than what we currently have right now with free high quality backup. Hey, coffee. Good morning to you. Good afternoon to you where you're at. Thanks for thanks for hopping in. Um, so that I mean that's that that's some of the things that's going on with with Google and Google Photos. Um, and, and if this is true, then I guess you can say that's kind of cool. But then again, the big question then was with this is is future Pixel phones going to have this capability? or is it just for past older pixel phones like the pixel 5 and older um i would think smartly that google would allow this for future pixels and past older pixels uh because they're already making it exclusive to pixels so that's already a big frown upon android users so if you're going to make it exclusive to pixel owners might as well allow pixel owners to be the ones to do it there's not a lot of Pixel owners compared to Samsung Galaxy S owners or Galaxy Note owners or iPhone owners, right? Because Google Pixels have had a hard time being marketed to consumers to consider as a phone for them to pick up and use. A lot of the geeks and nerds 
know what a pixel is and some of us are big fans of the google pixels that's to say but we don't we don't make majority of the consumer base out there around the world so if they were just to give it to current pixel owners and in future pixel devices coming out that would actually be at least something nice and and something that you know google pixel owners can feel good about because the pixels have always been branded as the still photography king that's their whole thing that's that's their whole um you know their 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 modus operandi that's the whole thing of that is photos still photography you know a lot of people were always complaining about google pixel phones not having the best video quality but they were never really in the market to champion for videography they were championing for photography and um so yeah they're still considered king when it comes to photos um and and how well not only does the hardware camera sensor be able to take a photo but the ai software to be able to correct imperfections in those photos to bring you the best photo that you can share on platforms such as instagram pixar snapchat facebook twitter um so you know with that being said uh kind of looking into it is this what we're going to see is google pixel phones going to have that capability with google photos hopefully i still pray because there's still time google can change their mind that they will continue to offer free photo backups if they're backed up in high quality resolution instead of full resolution and that way you can have a samsung device um, you can have a motorola or whatever android phone there is out there and be able to back your photos up but also this was actually good for iphone users because while you do have iCloud, um, you have iCloud storage, you have you have only five gigabytes given to you for free. And you can you can really use that up pretty quickly because that what backs up to the iCloud storage is not just photos only, but contacts and documents and stuff like that backs up into it. So you can eat that five gigs pretty quick. And then you would have to, you know, start paying for cloud storage on iCloud. One of the ways that I avoided having to subscribe to any type of Apple service because I take photos is that I had Google Photos and all my photos from the iPhone backs up to Google Photos on the free version, the high quality res. I don't do full resolution backups from the iPhone, no reason to. Um, and so, yeah, that was how I was alleviating the space that I had in iCloud storage for free was that the, the, the photos didn't stay on the phone. They were, they were backed up to Google Photos and then they were deleted off the phone. So I always had space to record new video, to record, you know, uh, or to capture more photos. Um, I'm kind of hoping that Google kind of takes a step back and says, hey, you know what? We're about to screw millions and millions and billions of people. Let's not do this. This is a bad taste. This will put a bad taste in not just the Google Pixel phones and not just in Google, but in Android. And yeah, someone can always come in. So you guys let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. If you're a part of the replay crew, let me know. Uh, before I ended it out, so yeah, yesterday I decided to switch. So I said yesterday I'm rocking the Pebble Time. Yes, this is the old smartwatch. I know that Pebble is, is obsolete. Pebble, was a, it's, um, its intellectual property was uh, acquired by Fitbit. Fitbit was acquired by Google. And now we have the Pixel Watch coming. So... Kind of like saying like 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 this is the great 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 grandfather to the Pixel Watch. I mean, yeah, it's not touchscreen, which is fine. Uh, it's got some water resistance to it, which is good, and it's got you know several days battery, which is what I really like out of it. I don't have to continuously charge it up like the Moto 360. I love the Moto 360. I think it's a dope watch. I like the display on that, really cool. But the battery is just not there. Uh oh. She can't find her work key. Oh boy. Um, yeah, so I'll be rocking this. I'm probably gonna do like a video, like a video video uh, update to the uh, Pebble Time. I also have the Pebble 2 and I have an original Pebble. And I may do them all in one video or I may do them in individual videos. Um, it's old tech, it's not brand new, but some people still use this. I mean, you still can use this. Um, as a matter of fact, Coupled with Rebel IO, the company that basically took over a lot of the a lot of the other intellectual property that, that Pebble had, including the servers and maintaining the servers that's keeping it functional, um, a lot of people still use their Pebble watches, and it tracks my sleep. Um, 
I don't have the Pebble 2 with the heart rate monitor, so I can't track my, my heart rate, but I can track my sleep with this. Uh, I can get, you know, the same notifications I got always. You can install apps that are, you know, productive, you know, things that have to do with like your Twitter feed and stuff like that. I can still do it all from my Pebble watch. And then of course, you know, voice to text, it's got a microphone on it. I can respond to text messages from the watch itself. So that's pretty cool. So I decided to throw my, my metal band on it. Uh, this band's more comfortable than those those sport rubber bands. I don't know why it is that way. But yeah, this feels really comfortable on my wrist, so I'm just going to keep it at that. I have my charger here on the desk, um, which is, you know, I have to be careful with this because Pebble doesn't, you know, they don't, Pebble's not around anymore. So a proprietary magnetic charging, uh, got to do it that way to charge this up. But anyways, guys, that's the show for today, Friday Junior Show. I know, I'm about half an hour long, got it. Um, but you know what, for those that popped in, Baby Yoda, Coffee, thank you guys for being here. Those that popped in that are silent in the background, lurking, um, thank you guys for being here as well. Appreciate it. Love you guys very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. If you're new here to the channel, there's the subscribe button below. What the, are you waiting for? Click it, hit the bell icon, choose all notifications so you get notifications when I go live, when I upload a video, or when I upload a YouTube Shorts. Um, you guys won't miss anything that comes to that. If you guys enjoyed the content that I do, share this around on social media. Share it to Facebook, share it to Twitter, share it to Mimi, wherever the hell you you lurk at in social media. Share this there so other people can get this information. Um, it will really help me out. I would really appreciate it. Link in, Links in the description for my social um, accounts. If you guys want to follow me there outside of YouTube, you know, that's pretty cool. And if you want to leave a one-time monetary donation, there it is right there. The link, the cash app link is right there below, ticking away left to right. Um, yeah, I would definitely appreciate that too as well. Y'all are cool. Be cool. Stay cool. And see you guys tomorrow. Peace.